Today I'm going to show you how you can use Redis in your applications. We're going to cover the installation and create a demo app written in Java. Redis is an in-memory key value database. It's very fast, but usually a bit less reliable than a real database. Although it is an in-memory database, uh, usually um, snapshots are stored on a regular basis on disk, so in case of a server restart, not all data is lost. First we're going to install Redis on this system. We're going to use Docker for this. So I'm going to create a folder called Redis. And inside that folder I'm going to create a second folder called Data. And a folder to store the config file in. The config file I'm going to take from uh, Redis. I'm just going to copy this default config. And call it Redis Conf. Then I'm going to create um, a docker compose file. I'm going to save myself a bit of typing by copying uh, a file from the docker compose documentation. I'm going to use this one. It already has a reference to Redis. So now we're going to edit this a little bit. So I'm going to add a port mapping to the default port of uh, Redis 6379. Oh, I shouldn't be using spaces in here. So. Um, I mean, I shouldn't be using tabs in JAML files, so that's why this is turning red now. Um, and we're gonna make uh, two volume mappings, one to the config file. was called redis.conf and it's gonna map to the file redis.conf in the container and the second volume mapping will be to uh, <coughs> the data folder so we're gonna store our data on our local system instead of in the container. <coughs> All right, that's it. I'm gonna save this <coughs> and I'm gonna start up um, a common prompt. And I'm gonna try to um, run the image. There was already an image on my uh, system, so it's going very fast now. On your system, it's probably gonna pull it first from um, Docker, so be patient. Now Redis is running. Uh, we're also gonna use uh, a third-party uh, desktop application to view the data inside the Redis data store. 
I've downloaded another uh, Redis desktop manager for this. This is a free uh, freeware uh, program to uh, be able to uh, access the data inside the Redis uh, data store. There are uh, several of these programs available for free. Um, I'm now going to run this desktop and make a connection to my local uh, Redis uh, instance. We can uh, put new data inside, for example, hello, and give this a value of world. Can make a second key, let's say it's called test, test, and give this a value of. Um, 15. Now you can see that the data is stored in this local uh, Redis uh, data uh, store. And the next thing we're going to do is uh, write an application, a Java application, to um, work with this uh, Redis uh, data store going to use Spring Initializer to create um, a Maven project. I'm going to call it Redis Demo. I'm going to add some dependencies. I'm going to add Lombok annotations to save us a bit of typing. It's going to be uh, a web project. And we're going to use the Spring Data Redis driver. I'm gonna put this project on my E drive and I'm gonna open it with um, IntelliJ. Let's run it to see if it's working. Okay, it's running fine. So now we're going to create the most basic application to access the Redis uh, data store. First, I'm going to create uh, a property. You can configure the Spring Redis URL. This is the default location, but uh, if you want to run it on another port, you can do that. The applications we're going to create is uh, we're going to count the um, access to the different uh, URLs in our application. So I'm going to create an entity class for that. I'm going to call it access count entity. And in this class, we're going to define uh, the ID. Redis can work with different data types, um, but it uh, is a key value database, so it knows uh, only things like strings and hashes. But um, we can um, also store objects in it. Spring handles this for us. so. We don't need to care much about it, but we need to define the ID. So the ID is going to be the location and uh, we're also going to store uh, the count. So let's call this uh, access count. Uh, 
I'm gonna create a constructor which I'm gonna use later and uh, we're gonna add some getters and setters and also I'm gonna add a, a reddish hash that's gonna be used to uh, store the values in the uh, reddish database call this access counts the next file I'm gonna create is uh, uh, the reddish uh, repository it's gonna be an interface I'm gonna call it access count repository this is gonna extend from uh, the spring crit repository it contains access count entity items and the key is a string So this gives us some basic functionality to uh, access the uh, the Redis uh, data store. The final file we're gonna create is a controller. I'm gonna program everything in this controller because it's not going to be much code anyway. So um, we call this the access count controller this is uh, going to be our uh, rest interface we're gonna make use of the um, access count repository Um, I'm also gonna add a constructor for this and inject the um, access count repository these are the endpoints we're going to implement as soon as you do an HTTP put on our application it's gonna register what URL you were using and it's going to count how many times that URL has been called. We could use this, for example, to enforce an acceptable use policy. As soon as you do an HTTP GET on access count, it will give us a list of all the um, URLs that have been called and how many times they have been called. And this is the implementation I already typed in. Here you see the get mapping to uh, retrieve the um, access count list. It's going to use uh, the find all, the default uh, implementation provided by Spring to retrieve all the um, access count entity items from the Redis data store. And um, the put mapping is going to take the location and it's going to look for that uh, location in the Redis data store. If it isn't there, it's going to create a new access count entity item and then it's going to increase the access count of this item by one and finally save the result in the data store. So let's run this and see what's happening. So first I'm going to retrieve the access count list. It's going to be empty. As soon as I um, access this URL and retrieve the list again, we see that location Peter has now been called one time. 
let's do the same for Tom but call it twice if we now refresh the list we can see that uh, location Tom has been accessed two times so this is um, how um, we can uh, store data and retrieve it in Redis if we uh, connect with our um, desktop manager we can also see the items inside the data store finally we're gonna create a second instance of this application and uh, we will show that uh, both applications are sharing the same distributed data store I'm gonna navigate to our um, demo application and I'm gonna build um, a jar for it I'm gonna start this jar on the different ports let's say 8090 instead of 8080 so now we have a second instance running if we now copy the request of the first instance And we're gonna change the port it's gonna access the second instance um, so if we um, retrieve the counters from the first instance we can see that as soon as you increase them with the second instance it's gonna show up in the first instance as well so this proves that uh, this uh, memory data is really uh, distributed over all instances well this in concludes my demonstration i hope you enjoy using redis for your own projects